what we are trying to do is we are uh, seeing file system interface and implementation so files means what so what do we understand by files now we are, we are storing so many uh, data so everything and that's what is called as a files so in the files what are there there may be data as well as there may be the programs so that's what your file system provides the mechanism for storage of data and access to data and program so what this uh, file system is doing file uh, in file system um, we are storing all the data what we are storing data and program and we see how can we access the data in the program so to do this the file system consists of two distinct parts so what are two distinct parts a uh, collection of files so what is collection of files each storing the related data so now so collection of files means what so now i have a ppt so what is ppt this is also one file so like this how many units we have in our syllabus we have five units so what i am doing i'm storing all these ppt files in one file or one folder all these five units and how are these they are ppts ppts means what powerpoint presentation so all these are of same type related so related what all are related to operating system so that's a collection of files each storing related data then what is directory structure so you all know how are we are creating a directory so in the windows at least before uh, uh, this windows has come it was a bit difficult because everything was in the form of command so even now also uh, you would have used uh, if you are using command prompt so if i want to check how many directories are there how many files are there then what is the command we are using we are using dir/p so what uh, we are just giving di dir so what is the dir stands for the dir stands for directory so what are the directories present in the which drive so to do that in command prompt we are using a command called as a dir whereas in case of windows it is not required to just right click uh, and you can create your own files again in that file you can create any number of sub files so that's what the directory structure so what is this directory structure organizes and provides information about all the files in the system so how are all these you are organizing that's what i told organizing so now uh, because i am handling only operating system i will be ha uh, having a folder called as operating system in that i may keep all my ppt files as one folder and all my notes uh, which will be in the form of word in a separate folder, uh, folder. and if i am conducting any test one folder assignments i am giving you one folder so like this what i am i am doing different uh, organizing all my files or folders in different different Uh, directories so that's what we see so how was it initially and provides information about all the files in the system so now you will be knowing what is the extension what is the size of each file how much data we have stored everything will be there that's what about all the information about the files you can get it so file concept so what is this file concept a file is a named collection of related information that is recorded on the secondary storage so where all these uh, files so now i have so many files now i have uh, powerpoint presentation files to teach you os class and i am sending you a notes so that which is in the form of word and i am sending you assignments so what are all these where i am storing all these i am storing in a secondary storage so what is secondary storage secondary storage is nothing but your disk what is main storage main storage is nothing but your ram so where the ram will be used for uh, loading the operating system now i am using my laptop so when i am using my laptop so when i want to on i'll use a power button so when i start a power button all my files which are required that will be loaded into a ram similarly when i click on my folder and which one i want to open i'll just open only my ppt so that's how the files are uh, stored in the secondary storage from a user's perspective a file is the smallest allotment of logical secondary storage so now what we understand as a user so i know that file is the smallest allotment so i can store any any type of files either it may be songs so 
the song files also i can store i can store text files i can store video files you can store your movies so that's what here uh, where you are storing we are storing all the data in a secondary storage so that is data cannot be written to secondary storage unless they are within a file so i i not until unless if i don't have powerpoint i cannot prepare a slides so if i am not preparing the slides if i don't have a word i cannot type anything i cannot create a uh, i cannot write everything in a uh, memory so to store everything we require a files again the files may be of different types it is not that i should have a pp no, powerpoint or i should have only word or anything notepad uh, so there are so many files so that's what to store any any data we require a file so within the file only we try to store data the information in a file is defined by its creator so now i am just creating what i am creating i'll create and name the file so once you start your right button and say create new file it will be only new so then you want to create a uh, operating system then you give some name so that's what here the information in a file is defined by its creator many different types of information may be stored in a file like source program so now you are doing your uh, projects you are doing your uh, mini projects so how in your mini project what type of files you have you are only writing your project you are doing your project only in word or something else even you are doing your source code so source code where you are doing you are typing in a editor so the editor may be of different uh, uh, things um, the editors may be eclipse editor or notepad editor or jvm editor or there are so many editors that may mean anything but what is there in that that is what is called as a source program okay so now you are uh, type the program and you execute using your java compiler that is jvm so once you execute your source program then how it is converted it is converted to a object program what is this object program uh where the system should be able to understand what we have typed so source program is we are able to understand then now what is object program it is a intermediate like your pseudo code that's a it will be in a form of uh, machine instruction so that's what we call it as a object program and executable program okay now you have executed your java program you have typed you have opened one editor you have typed your uh, java program then you execute once you execute starting it will create a object a file so after you run so your you will get a class file as well as exe file what is that exe file exe file means your program is successfully run the same way even in your project also if your project is completely working then a executable program that is exe file will be there so what is that exe file means what so whatever your program is executed that will be converted to a object code and later later it will be converted to your executable program okay so now you are executing the program then you give a values from your keyboard what is that uh, value you are giving you may give any any type either you may give in numeric data or text data a string so anything you can give that's what is called as the numeric data then uh, text so what is the text that's what i told text can be anything you can give a character or you can give a um now you can give a string words then payroll records so every time i because uh, i cannot sit and type huge data at one time then what i what we'll do we are using the database so what is the database you are starting we keep all our data in a one record that's what we generally give some name that's what your payroll record so i want to know how much is been paid for one employee in the company what all fields we want we want is employee id number we want his uh, name we want something something like that pay scale what is his uh, hra what is his basic all these we require that's what is a payroll record so then i may have a graphics image so sometimes um, the same way here even in, when i'm teaching you only the text 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 may be very bold then what i'll do to make uh, for you people to little bit understand then what we do i may use a graphics image similar like your though you have a algorithm we are using the flow charts why we are using the flow charts better understanding for the person 
along with that sound recording so now i am teaching you through the online so if i sometimes you people were saying madam i am not able to hear your voice means what i have muted here uh, maybe because of some sound uh, uh, sound is not getting recorded so that's how even the sound recording is also one type of file so what are all present here i may have a source program in a file or i may have a object program i may have a exe file or i may have a numeric data or i may have a text or i may have a payroll or i may have a graphics file sound record like this i may have so many things that's what the information present in the file a file has a certain data structure according to its type so what is a file data structure present it may be present on anything so now we see one by one that is what text file what is text file a sequence of characters organized into a lines so uh, you have a sequence text file so we start typing so we type a characters and how are those character sequence one after the other we form so that's what is called as a text file so next one is what source file so what is a source file so a c is a sequence of subroutine and functions each of which is further organized as declaration followed by executable state so how i am doing how we are doing that's what is a source file so what is there in the source file we have a functions we have a subroutines so those are all present in the source file and what is object file a sequence of bytes that's what we have zeros one zeros one zeros one that's what is a sequence of bytes organized into blocks understandable by the systems linker so who will be able to understand all this this will be able to understand by the object file then what is the last an executable file a series of code execution with a code section that the loader can bring into the memory and execute so now suppose you are doing your java program or your data structure or your cn any any type of program so what what we do we generally have a header file so in your java you use a predefined thing called as a import same way in your uh, data structure or in your c based on which type of language you are using so you may say hash include stdio.h so what we are doing we are requesting for the compiler to load what is present already as a built in function to load that particular file that is stdio.h into the program where i want to execute this program that's what is called as a executable file so then you may ask me what is the difference between object file and a executable file? object file means intermediate file so intermediate file means suppose if i say add a plus b so i may understand you may understand that the keyword add is used for addition of two numbers but the system will not be able to understand the uh, pseudo codes so then what what should be done it should be done in a form converted in a form where the system can understand that's what is called as a executable file so these are the some types of files which uh, we are using first one is a text file text file is what how is the text file all the characters so now we have a english uh, letters how many english letters we have how many english letters we have using those letters we will form a words so in your kindergarten you would have learned all the alphabets after that in the next class you would have taught you how to frame a, a words so like this what is a text file collection of characters so when you form a words then that is what uh, first you will be learning word uh, alphabets after that words after that forming the sentences same way here sequence of characters so used but you used for typing so now whatever you have in your ppt this also we can call it as a text file that's what is called as a text file next what is source file the program what we are typing so that's what is called as a source file then what is object file a sequence of bytes so what do we mean by bytes it may be in a form of blocks that's what i told uh, it is uh, intermediate code where the system may not be able to understand but still we are converting our english like language to a uh, system able to understand that that's what is called as a object file so next <clears throat> next one is executable file executable file means your program is working when you are uh, working it will be converted to a class file 
or uh, executable file so that's what is a executable file is so now we move on to a file attributes so what is file attributes attributes means what properties a file has certain attributes which vary from one operating system to another so now now we have so many operating systems so i may say windows i may say ubuntu i may have so many other things so based on what type of operating system you are using based on that the attributes keep change same way here now mithili characters and bhavishya and rajeshwari characters i cannot say same maybe uh, uh, some uh, mithili will be good in uh, maths bhavishya may be good in something else Uh, Rajeshwari may be good, good in something else. Like this, we can give uh, say what are uh, which where their characteristics are and how in which one they are good enough. That's what we see here. File attributes depends upon one one person to one person. It varies. First one is date. So now for anything we require name. So now in the same way when any any child is born, we cannot call a boy 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 or girl girl girl. So then, what we do after some days or some months, we uh, do a uh, naming ceremony. Why do we do so that we can call that particular human being with some name? That's what a name. The same way you grow up and you come to school, and what each school will be given with a name only. But again, in the same class, if there are two, three people with the same name, then how to differentiate between them? Then we cannot call them with the initials. so then we have a something called as a roll number so now you people have a usn so what is that usn uniquely identifying you people if i say abhavishya means she will be having her your uh, usn i can uniquely identify what is bhavishya is what is mithili is so like that that's what is a name so what is the name a symbolic file name is the only information kept in a human readable form so how this is there it will be able in the form of human reader identifier the unique number identifies the file within the file system it is a non human readable name for the file so in the same way now we have a new so again i say operating system so what is that identifying what type of file it is what is the attribute like that identifier then type this information is needed for those systems that support different types so what is a different types in in my uh, in anybody's uh, system we have a text files we have a image files we have a video files we have a image like this there are so many files what we have we have ppt files we have word files so like that we may have so that's what is called as a type so in the same way now uh, generally in human being Uh, what are the genders we are doing what type of are male female and one more also now right, uh, right now some uh, for some cases it has been added so that's what that type and location so right now each one of us are in a different uh, locations in, throughout uh, india so the information is a pointer to a device and to the location of the file on that device same way location where my data or where is my program so if you don't know path i am searching complete so huge number of uh, files will be difficult that's what that's the reason we require a location then size what is the size the current size of the file in bytes words or blocks and possibly the maximum allowed size are included in this attribute so now if i just, if you just click on that even now also in the powerpoint you can see down how many slides are there so what it shows the size in the same way when you click on any any file it will give you what type what is the size of it okay so the size even for you people to use daily package data pack you you will be giving them uh, they'll say one particular day you may use one 1 gb of data so like that for anything anything we require a size so the current size of the file in bytes it may be in the form of bytes it may be in the form of words or it may be in the form of a blocks and possibly the maximum allowed size are included in this attribute next one is protection so access control information determines who can can do reading writing executing and so on 
thought is his protection so now uh, bhavishya has her mail id so though every one of us know what is a bhavishya's mail id but still we know bhavishya's mail id we cannot enter into her inbox why we cannot enter because until unless she opens and enters with the password then only we will be able to see her inbox the same way here protection so everything is required for a protection the access control information determines who can do reading writing executing and so on so that's what here so to execute all this then time date and user identification so at what time uh, morning monday 8:30 you have a operating system so what is that 8 8:30 stands for time date what is the date today it is 18 what is a user authentication so who has used so today now google meet everyone started using online classes and it should be identified who has used in that case we require a user identification this information may be kept for creation last modification and last user these data can be useful for protection security and usage monitor so that's what here this is required for uh, 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 these details are required at what time we have created a file at what time we have modified a file at what time which what was the date and uh, how many what what did we do with that file whether we have modified or added some contents all these are there with a time date and user identification so these are the file attributes so these are some of the file attributes so next attributes means properties next we move on operations so what what do we mean by operations is what type of um, operations we can do on the existing uh, data the so file is an abstract data type so what do we mean by abstract abstract means we are just giving you how the a data i don't want to show everything abstract means overview abstract data to define it properly we need to define certain operations on it so we have to uh, uh, we need to define certain operations whether you want to add subtract multiply divide or add two strings so there are so many operations which we can do so that's what here file operation first one is creating a file first first thing what we have to do we have to create a file this this includes two steps find the space in the file system and make an entry in the directory so what we have to do this includes two steps first find the space in the file system and make an entry in the directory first we should know if i want to create a file whether i have a space for my file to create so that's what a create a file and enter that file then write the your file so what i want to write in the file so to write a file we make a system call specifying both the name of the file and the information to be written to the file so what i want first i have to name the file well, not only that we have to call a system file say, saying that i want to write something into the file using the name of the file the system searches the directory to find the location of the file the system must keep a right pointer to the location in the file where the next write is to take place so the right pointer must be updated where whenever a write occurs so that's what here the right pointer will be updating so reading a file to read to read from a file we use a system call that specifies the name of the file and where the next block of file should be put so that's what is called as a reading a file to read from a file we can use system call that specify the name of the file and where the next block of file should be put so these are some of the file operations so we see some more repositioning with the file repositioning means what i will uh, copy the file from uh, uh, operating system to a um, some other file so 
I want to copy and paste it somewhere else. That's what is called as a repositioning within a file. So the directory is searched for the appropriate entry and the current file position is set to a even value. This file operation is also known as file seek. So what we are doing here, we are doing with the file seek. So deleting a file. Suppose you think that, that I have typed a file, I don't want that file because I have modified and saved some other name and I want to delete the old file. You can delete the deleting the file. This is also one operation available. So de delete a file, search the directory, then release all file space and erase the directory entry. So what we do, we try to delete a file. Next one is truncating. So truncating a file, the user may wants to erase the contents of the file, but keep its attributes rather than forcing the user to delete the file and then recreate it. The truncating, truncation allows all attributes to remain unchanged except for the file length. The file length is reset to zero and its file space released. So truncating means what we are doing. We are trying to add. I don't want to delete. I, I want to be uh, the file which is already there, but I want to add contents to this. So that's what is called as a truncation. So next, some more operations we see here. The other common operations include appending. So what do we mean by appending? Already some file is there I want to add. Suppose I have typed one chapter, uh, half chapter, and I want to add uh, remaining uh, chapter contents. So then we call it as a appending. So new information to the end of an existing file and remaining an existing file. Or I can rename. So why do we require a rename? Same way, uh, now in your tenth, in your tenth also, you were having some roll numbers. In those times, you, we were calling it as a roll number. But now, when you come for PUC, again there was some other number. When you come for degree, you have some other number. So now in your MCA, you have some other USA number. So what we, what these, all these renaming of all your names? Names means with your roll numbers. So in your uh, class based on your class then a renaming is required so you cannot say i have my roll number in 10th this, this one i want it like this only no it is not possible because that was for 10th so that in 10th your friends were different and in puc you were friends were different means your classmates were different and your in your mca now classmates are different then we cannot say you cannot we cannot retain the same usl and different uh, universities so in your 10th, you have uh, CBSE, ICSC, and each one having its own separate body. That's what you're renaming. So already something is there. I want to rename that. Renaming when we do existing. Already it is existing, then only you can rename. Most of the file operations involve searching the directory for the entry associated with the named file. So what we do here, most of the file operations involve searching the directory for the entry associated with the named file. So that's what here we even try to search. So now you can click on anything and you start searching. That is also available. To avoid this content searching, the OS keeps small table known as open file table containing information about all open files. So that's what you can see. So the same way here, if I click on this uh, uh, PPT only, you can click on open so you can see the recently which are all open so you can see recent present so what is this temporary memory which is present for this operating system like this we have for all the uh, files a temporary file so that's what uh, which are opened that's what a uh, open file table so the table which is recently what recently you have opened in the same way for your browser or anything we have a uh, Recently, what are the data we have opened? So then when file operations is requested, this table is checked. When the file is closed, the OS removes its entry in the open file table. Suppose, uh, what is the limitation? So I may say I may keep it five recently opened files. So before, after six files, that will be erased. Or pointer will not be there for that. 
So that's what it means here. These are some of the file operations. So in the same way, every file which is open has a certain information associated with it. So now in the same way, now uh, we are meeting in a Google Meet. So when we are meeting, I will be knowing who have come online and who have not come. So what we are doing? I have a certain information. So Bhavisha has come, Mithili has come, Rajeshwari has come. Like this, I can point and say how many people are there at 8.30 to my class. Same way here. So every file has its own uh, properties or association. One is file pointer, file open count, uh, disk location of the file, access right. So file pointer. What do we mean by file pointer? So now at least you can see in this Google Meet only. So when I am speaking, that green color one started blinking. Uh, others who are there, even you have muted your uh, voice record. If you want to learn that and you can speak, what we are doing? We are pointing, file pointer, used to track the last read write location. This pointer is unique to each process. Next one is file open count. So, what we are doing? How many times I have opened this file? How many times? Uh, we have to. So now we are uh, every time you people have to join a Google Meet. So when you want to join the Google Meet, you should have an app called as a Meet uh, in your file. But right now, because we are using every one of you have uh, your um, Gmail account. So when you open your Gmail account, automatically you can uh, log in into a Meet, which is already present. It is not required for you to install. Even in mobile, you have to. That's what here different. Uh, uh, ways we have the uh, file open count the disk location of the file most of uh, file operations require the system to modify data within the file so location of the file on the disk is essential so why do we require the file location so where is my file where i have stored so in the same way when you execute your java or any cnr ds programs so you should know the path where your programs are so in your lab, if you have 10 programs, you should know where is your first program, where is your second program to execute because the path is required even for the operating system. The location is required for the operating system to sense where it is. Same way here. Now every one of us are using a Arogya Setu app. So why do we require this uh, app? Why the government has told that you please install your Arogya Setu app? Why? Because it will say that because we don't know who is positive uh, affected person so if he comes next to you how will you know that he is positive so to inform you that there is a positive person near to you we are uh, the government of india has asked you to download setu app so that's what here what is how does that do using the location so in which location i am you can just check your uh, mobiles also there it will show you in your uh, Arogya Setu app, it will show in wherever you are. So right now I am here in college. So if I click on that and see 500 meters, how many people are there and how many of them are using, are there any positive cases? So one, one meter, two meters, two kilometers, three kilometers, like this still 10 kilometers, it will give us the information. So when I am in the college, I'll go home. Even that will be changed. Automatically it is getting changed. Why it is it is getting changed based on the location. That's what here. Disk location is also required when you want to keep all the files. Then access rights. So each process opens a file in an access mode. So read. So what what type of access you are giving for your file? So whether you are reading, writing, or appending. Reading means I just so now I am opening a PPT file where I am just reading. I am not doing anything. So if I want to write for my PPT before my class, I have to make my PPT ready. So again, they have given us the formats also because the PPT formats from the college, they have told there should be logo, there should be college name, there should be like this only, this format only you have to use for our PPT. So what we are doing, we are writing into the given format of the PPT. So that's what here, the access rights. So appending. So today I have done with my class, and tomorrow I have to again come for the class. Before coming, I have to prepare my slides, prepare my uh, uh, lecture, everything, and come. So 
then what i am doing appending adding which is already there i am adding some contents to that that's what is called appending so these are the access rights given for the files so this information is by the operating system to allow or deny subsequent input output request okay so now what are the different types of files we have there are so many files we see one by one uh, an operating system can operate the file in a required manner only if it is recognizing the type of that file so a name a file name is split into two parts so anything you take to you execute your java program how do you store your java program file name dot extension why do we require extension because i should know what type of file it is so when you give dot java the compiler or operating system will understand that this file is java or java program and you give dot cpp then it understands that that is a c++ program so like this we require a extension then you give dot txt means what it is a text type so the same way here there are so many usual extension we see them the file extension normally indicates the type of file so what type of file so in this 4.1 table indicates various types and what are the functions so file type executable so what is this executable i told you once your program is done your program is working you can see in the same folder .exe will be present with the same name so what is that .exe it is a executable file so then cop so now every one of us .com uh, what is this .com it is also a one executable file then bin and or none so these are the usual extension we give for the executable file so what is the functions of this file Re ready to run machine language program so what is this executable program says it is a ready to run so this ready to run machine level machine language programs that's what i do dot exe dot java dot c plus plus dot c dot c sharp there are so many things that's what is called as a executable then what is object so it is still not converted to machine language but it is a intermediate code then we call it as a object so then how what is the extension we are giving they have been given that is what is given sometimes obj or dot just o so what is the type of that that function compiled machine language not linked it is compiled but still it is not linked or not completely converted to a machine language source code that's what when we start typing that's what is called as a source code it can be c program or it can be c++ or it can be java it can be pascal it can be assembly level language any type of file so right now we have so many other files like html file css file a web based file c sharp files uh, java files jsp there are so many type of files that's what is called as a source code so what is the work of the source code source code in various languages it can be in a different types of languages what is this batch so now in your labs also or in your final exam also so 10 10 students will be called will be given a time or called as a batch so that 10 students at one time can execute their program or be in a load for the exam same way here also batches so common commands to commands to the command interpreter so make all these one batch execute all java program execute all c++ program execute all uh, uh, video files i want to see movie so that's what uh, different types of uh, files made as a batch text now i am opening a ppt now i may open word what are all this this is what is called as a text files so that's what a, a text textual data or document word processor that's what i told so now we may have a different uh, uh, word processor we have a ms word or we have a word also in that we have a notepad also these are all the different types of uh, word processor that was that the extensions we may give as a p wp txt rrf doc generally when we open our word we give it as a doc so in the same way there are different types of other words formats available so in the same way if we give for open a notepad then we give txt so again depends upon what type of word processor you are opening 
the textual data and a document then library so what is library all the built in functions for your processor or for a compiler is present in the library not only there not only in your uh, compilers now even i don't know how to open a powerpoint then we have a help so what is present there all the libraries are present where it will explain us how to open how to save how what we have what we can do in a ppt like that there are so many you can take any any type there is a help for it so that's what is a library so library you may have a, a dll file a movie file there are so many libraries also so libraries of routine for programmers print or view now uh, i have created a ppt i want to take a print out of this my ppt then which way you can take i can take now what i did i didn't do a full screen because i have observed in some of my videos if i do full screen half of my ppt slide is getting cut or closed with the some other uh, text that's why i am not giving the full screen in the same way print so i can print one one ppt a uh, slide at uh, one page or i want to make two uh, two slides in one page or i can make four uh, slides in one page so that's what here you can do a print or a view so arc zip file or tar file these are the files available to uh, view or combine so ascii or binary files in the format for printing or view so then archive uh the same way you combine all my ppts because i want to uh, combine all this and send uh, for all of you so then what we do i can combine all these into a file zip file or arc file or tar file so that i can send all my five modules ppt at one stretch or else what I have, what is an option i have to send one by one by one so that's what here arc is been done relating related files grouped into one file sometimes compressed for archiving or storage so why do we use zip or r tar or r file because we try to compress our file so that i may save some storage some memory that's what your archive multimedia so now um, all these days we were at least uh, not uh, it was difficult some 40 years down the line for this multimedia but right now even everything is available with the multimedia that's what you just open youtube you can see so many uh, whether you can see all the videos same way here multimedia it can be a mpeg file it can be your movies or it can be anything so that's what binary file containing audio and a video files that's what is called as a multimedia now when i record this and give to you it is converting it to a audio file it is like where my record as well as my my image and this ppt and your who are the people who are uh, attending this class will be recorded in that and it will convert that into a audio file and they'll send it back that's what is a multimedia is doing so next we move on to a access methods so how can you access now right now i am in the online class so to access this i should send you a invitation when i send you invitation how should i in send a invitation because i know your mail id so i will send so that's what what i am doing i am trying and later after you get my invitation you click on that you you'll get a access to this class so that's what is called as access that is one method same way in operating system how should we access this so access method there are several methods to access the information stored in the file some techniques are discussed here sequential access sequential means one after the other so now when we uh, when we conduct a, a lab exam what will be, how we are calling you we are calling based on your usn we call usn 1 2 3 4 so what we are doing sequentially according to you with your usn 10 10 people we are calling for 3 hours of time to conduct your lab exam what is that it is sequence same way sequential access with respect to your files anything how the operating system is doing that's what a sequential access 
it is the simplest method of a file access here information in the file are accessed one record after the other in an order so in the order wise it will be done so it works on a logic read next write next reset so what what is this done okay so now uh, after one after usn1 who is next usn2 who is next usn3 so what i am doing i can read and i'll ask you i'll call and after calling what i'll do i'll give you a sheet and i'll may ask you people to write so that's what read next write next and reset it is shown in the figure 4.1 so that's what here you can see uh, how we are doing a, a sequential access note that uh, in the programming language like c the functions like fc rewind etc can be used so this is what the beginning and go back so the, uh, uh, we were seeing um, our radios i think you whether you people are uh, seeing or not i don't know um, but some 40 years down the line we were having one instrument called as a radio so what it was doing is okay now also you have fm fm radio where whatever they give you whatever they uh, release you have to see uh, see and you don't have an option of going back coming down coming forward whereas nowadays when you have downloaded you can do anything you can stop you can go backward you can come forward that's what a se sequential access is one after the other you have to see this is one access method used sequential access next one is a direct access that's what i told uh, now you download and you can listen your songs so that's what a direct method is so what is this another method is a direct access or relative access a file is made up of fixed length a logical records that allow programmers to read and write records rapidly in no particular order so what i can do i can read i can write and there are no particular order i should i cannot i will if i have would have not called you sequentially <clears throat> for the lab exam then whoever comes i can take and send that is what the direct access so the direct access method is based on a disk mode of a file since this allow random access to any file block for direct access the file is viewed as a numbered sequence of blocks or records a direct access file allows arbitrary blocks to read or write thus we may read block 14 then read block the 53 or then read block 7 so that's what how what is the example i can go for first block or i can go for the last block i can go for first go first last anyway that's what is called as a direct access <coughs> so another methods other methods other access methods are there so there are several access method based on a direct access method one of such method uses a index so when In the same way, even you have if you have a textbook, you want to search for uh, access methods in your operating uh, operating system textbook. Then what you do? You see your first page, index page, and see where this access method is, in which page number it is, and you go directly to that particular method. So what is that? Whatever you have in your textbook, what is that is called? That is called as a access method. That's what is a text method. so that's what here that is what is called as a index so in your first sheet you have a index that's what your content page even when you do your projects mini projects you are writing a table of contents why do we require this table of content because i can go exactly where what it is i can go where is your implementation section where is your testing where is your requirement so i can see all this where i can go for snapshots that's what is as a index file so index contains pointer to various blocks so what the index is contain it will give you give me a pointer so that i can go directly there find a record in a file we find first search the index and then use the pointer to access the file directly and to find the desired record the working of index file is shown in the figure now you can see in this diagram so how this indexing is been done so all you have same way in your project reports you are keeping a table of contents same way here the index file 
this index file in which page what it is so i want to search for a smith smith then i can go for index page and check where the smith in which page number it is where it is also so that's what is a relative file so this is an example for index file same way so you have a whatsapp group so if i send a second semester mca whatsapp group i will see so many 53 people of you are there but i don't want i just want to call one student then what i'll do i'll search in a search for and search for <coughs> bhavisha or mithili then when i give your name bhavisha then it will go to that particular person and search so what i am doing i am giving searching searching for the index searching for the pointer where bhavisha name is same way mithili so i want to search for a mithili then what i'll do i'll type a mithili name in the search box then i'll see where it is the pointer will take me where mithili phone number is or where that particular details are that's what same way here in operating system also we have a something called as a indexed file so in indexed file all where my data is i have where i can go for this particular where is in the memory what is a memory what is the size it is open all those will be present in the indexed I will stop here and we continue in the next lecture. So before that, <coughs> if we just summarize <coughs> what we have done today, we have started with the core unit and we have seen about what is a file, what is a file concept, what is the file is, and we have seen what are the different types of files available, and we have seen what are the properties. Properties we call it as a file attributes, and we have seen these are the, some properties available. That is. name identifier type location size what is a protection what is the time open what is the date and user operations what type of operations i can do file operation i can create a file write a file read a file then i can reposition with my file i can delete a file or truncate a file these are some of the operations which we can do with respect to a file along with this we can do appending renaming the file so in the same way how do i access So I have a file pointer, file open count, disk location, and the access rights. So along with that, what are the types of files available? So there are so many types of files available. It can be file type. What are the extension we are doing? What are the functions of that file? So that's what we have seen: uh, executable object, source code, batch, text file, word processor, library, print, archive, multimedia. These are the file types. What we have seen. Then what? How do I access them? that's what we have started with the access method one is sequential sequential means one after the other one after the other i have to go one after the other that's what is called sequential then we have seen with the direct access i can go directly where mithili is i want i just want only mithili then i cannot start searching from us and 1 2 3 and reach for mithili so that's what is a sequential method in direct method i can go directly to mithili or bhavish that's what a direct uh, other method is indexed i have a index page i search there and i can go to that particular page so that's what is called as a indexed so i'll stop here we'll continue in the next class next class is on witness okay thank you